are listening to Waffle, the bite-sized podcast with Paul Jenkins. First broadcast on Rossendale Radio on the 27th of December 2020. This week, Paul talks to comedian, musician and poetry legend John Hegley. They talk about his work, his love of music and how both can help to improve mental health. 104.7 104.7 Rossendale Radio Welcome to the Waffle Hour. It's Paul Jenkins here on the Weekend Wind Down, and my guest this afternoon actually needs an introduction. Uh, and I've actually had to write things down because he's got a CV as long as your arm, and quite frankly, if I miss something out, you would not forgive me. So... John started his career at the Comedy Store in 1980 as part of the Brown Paper Bag Brothers alongside Otis Cannelloni. Uh, appearances on TV, Carrots Lib in 83, his own show Word of Mouth in 1990. Uh, his One of his poems got voted the second most popular comic poem of all time in Britain. He's performed on the West End in the Pyjama Game. He's a regular at the Edinburgh Festival, he's an avid supporter of Luton Town, he's an honorary Doctor of Laws from the University University of Luton and I probably could go on but he's definitely on the phone at the moment good afternoon John Hegley uh, good afternoon Paul it's, it's quite a list of stuff that isn't it well I've been, I've been around a while I've been around a while you know it's a, it, well I was going to say I was, at least you've been busy for the last 40 years that's that's quite good um and I, I'm, I'm fascinated because it started I didn't know about the the brown paper bag brothers there's is there any footage of that out there good um I don't know if there is, actually. So I see Otis. Otis is doing some really fantastic paintings, actually, at the moment. So, But, you know, we have to find new tasks. And uh, Otis, who is, who's my partner in the Brown Paper Bag Brothers, he's been doing really fun. He's done a brilliant one of Tommy Cooper, actually. I, I um, spotted it on Facebook just the other day. Did you? I, well, yeah, I, well, I got very, very briefly to work with Otis uh, on uh, uh, for Comedy Club for Kids uh, one morning because he does some brilliant magic work for children. Oh, yeah, uh, yeah. And, uh, and uh, so we, we sort of hooked up on facebook that way but it's uh it, yeah it's 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 i love the way that all of the arts community all just they everyone knows each other it's it's wonderful you dig a little bit below the surface and everyone seems to know yeah. what's going on yeah, um, and that's that started your career but of course it went off in in, in a huge a huge way after that um i, I mean w- w- just uh, do you want to talk us through about how how would you describe john hegley to somebody who's never come across john hegley before how does that work <laughs> Um, do you know, it's fun, I, I, I've just been uh, getting uh, the books out that I said I'd read, you know, because I said I'd do a cat poem. Mm. And I just, I've got that book and it's just, I've just laid it down in front of me, um, f- f- face down. And on the back, it sa- I just noticed that it says uh, that the book, the aim, it says the aim is poignancy mixed with jiggery poetry. <laughs> and I forgot that I'd said jiggery poetry and I thought oh, I should try and use that again, actually. But I think that's a fair uh, starting point, if you say that, because it's obviously wordplay. Mm. Um, and, and it's, but it's more than wordplay, but that's a good starting point. It's playing with words. I mean, when I'm doing it live, it's playing with the audience. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I think the interactive part is, the, is a very important part. So I do workshops. Obviously, you do, you interact in a workshop. Mm-hmm. But everywhere... I try to find a, a way to bring people in to find the common ground. Um, it, it is comic. It is comic. There is music. Um, I'd like to think it was accessible to to pretty well in anybody. Um, I mean, I do shows for three and four year olds. I did a, um, a, a school performance recently, which was really nice that we could do it um, with Zoom. Mm. And we did, th- and we had three classes, and the children had to ask questions, and they were only five years old. Mm. And one of the children said, "What are your friends like?" <laughs> Proper I question. Mean, what a brilliant question, isn't it? <laughs> um, and, and yeah, and, I, and it threw me, and it threw me, and I like to be, you know, I like to be thrown. I'm, I'm quite happy not to be uh, knowing exactly what's going on. 
it's it's nice to get that kind of sense of spontaneity and improvisation with an audience uh, and it's funny you should mention about children because uh, when my my own poetry sort of life started um a, a, by chance working on the picture the poet exhibition that was touring the country of which yeah. your your photograph was one of those photographs yeah. um and and they managed to find the most unjohn hegley like photograph i think i've ever seen because you look very very in in that from everything i'd seen of you and and sort of read from you but you look very very poignant and very very serious and very moody and the, and the kids were looking at and i said what do you think this poet's like and they said oh he's a very <laughs> serious man and i was like it's not john hegley i know <laughs> Ah, right. Well they, well, they obviously caught me. Uh, they might have caught me on a gloomy day. We're coming on to that later, though, aren't we? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, we, we, we all have our gloomy days. Um, I, I thought, I'd, uh, I'd, before we uh, sort of uh, delve into some of your work, I thought I'd, uh, you, you went for a bit of a potato theme a few years back, around about 2013, uh, sort of uh, your, your collections around about there. Um, and we're going to have a listen now uh, to one of the pieces you did. And when we were just talking off air a moment ago, you said, which version was this? Was this the one I did for Glastonbury? And and I, I like the fact that you could just kind of roll that off and go, did I do this Glastonbury this year? Um, this this piece, Potato, wh- where did it come from, for starters? Um, just taking the ordinary, taking the basic things and trying to take them to, I don't know, other ba- non-basic places. But, the, you know, so the, I think of the potato as the basic vegetable, although it's quite exotic, really, because it, it, it comes from Peru, doesn't it? And it's got the most incredi- incredible flower. But we do think of the potato, the spud. Mm. You know, we called it the spud, so it's a pretty basic thing. But the, um, I think the recording that you've got, because we couldn't do Glastonbury, um, so they did a, a, an online poetry tent, and this was my um, contribution to that. And this is Potato. I'm not a normal person, whatever that may be. There is something very, very vegetable about me. This human skin I'm skulking in, it's only there for show. I'm a potato. When I told my father it was something of a blow, he called me a dirty so-and-so. He picked up quite a racket He grabbed me by the jacket I said, Daddy, will you pack it in? Won't you help me grow? Won't you love me for my blemishes And look me in the eye Before one of us is underground And the other says goodbye And he said no when I was a schoolboy, I never knew why I was so useless at cross-country running But now I know why I was so slow And why they put me back in the sack race I'm a potato so that was Potato uh, by John Hegley. And, uh, John, there's, I, I tried to sum that up, and it's it's either it's a poem or song or, or it's about parental relationships or it's about somebody sort of coming out of their of, of themselves to their father or, is that, or it's just a really lovely song about a potato, and I can't quite work out what it is. I'd like, I hope it's a little bit of, like the potato itself, I hope it's got some versatility and uh, widespread spreadedness. Uh, and I, I said to you a bit, as we were looking at it, I couldn't work out if it was... Uh, I said, I can't work out if this is a, a, a mandolin or a ukulele. And you and you corrected me immediately with... What what, what do you think it was? It's a cavaquinho, I believe. Because um, I, I haven't got the, the clip in front of me. But mm. I'm pretty sure I was playing... Which is... A, it's like a ukulele. Uh, in fact, I've got it here. Oh, uh, it's like... But, but you, as you may be able to hear, mm. the strings are steel. Right. They are steel... <laughs> and they sing along this is wonderful oh yeah they, yeah they are they, they are. and one of the when i do um when i do um workshops i, I give the examples of the instrument because mm. i try to get children to, to use things called kennings which are ways of describing it's a it's a nordic um way of writing poetry and you call, call that as you call that a, a voice maker a tone giver um uh, so you give make little compact little phrases for something 
Uh, you, all of these small string-based instruments, did, was this a, 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 a sort of decision you took early on? Because it, I, I'm assuming that they're, they're more portable than, you know, yes, lumping so around the right. guitar yes, and, so right. and everything it's, else. Yeah, it's at, the initial reason why I had the mandolin was because I was in a play about... Uh, I was a Roman servant... And so we thought that the, a, a mandolin looked more Roman than a guitar. Right. <laughs> and so that we had a round back mandolin. I've got a flat back now. Mm. Um, but then I, I thought, oh, it's lighter. I'll play that when I'm doing my shows. I, I, it, it, look, it, it, as, it, as with all things, it's usually it makes practical sense, um, which is wonderful. Um, right, we're going to take a very quick break uh, for your first music choice uh, now. Now, you, uh, you you chose a bit of Kirsty McColl uh, to start with, which is wonderful because I love Kirsty McColl. Um, and you've gone for a New England. Why, why this one in particular? Uh, partly because you said that you came originally from uh, Barking. Well, it's, yeah, not well, far not down Barking, the road. But from Essex, is that I correct? I, I'm a Basildon boy. Barking's just down the road. It'll do. <laughs> It begins with B. It does indeed. Um, well, on the same uh, same train line. <laughs> so um, that was that was part of the reason. Um, but the other uh, the reason is that this is so it's Billy Bragg's uh, written it, mm-hmm. um, and Kirsty McColl sings it, and it's just joyous, and it's a time it's joyeux Noel. Indeed, a New England. Playing more of the songs you like. This is one hundred four point seven Rossendale Radio. Yes, indeed. It's 104.7 Rossendale Radio, and my guest this afternoon is Mr. John Hegley. And we've been uh, we've been having a chat about uh, well about pets in particular. And you asked me when we we said about you coming on the show, um, uh, do you do you have any cats or dogs or, or vegetables? Uh, and uh, and I have no vegetables. We don't own a dog, but we do own a cat. Uh, and this uh, seemed to spark something in you, John. And uh, and th- there appears to be cat poetry uh, about to happen. There's, yeah, so this is a poem um, called Pat and the Wizard, mm. and I'd like you to supply the missing words, Paul. I'll, I'll do my best. <laughs> Everything seemed flat to Pat, so she sat on her bike and cycled round to see her uncle M- M- Mike? Matt, Matt. the wizard, oh, even course. though her tyres were... Flat? And there was a... Cat? Blizzard. Ah. So what's the matter? Pat said Matt, and Pat explained, and Matt said, Pat, let me look inside my... Hat? There's nothing there, he looked and said, then put his hat back on his... Head. And went all red and rolled about and spat a pair of glasses. Out? Now look through these, the wizard said, and Pat, she put them on her head and said, the world's not flat. Christopher Columb. Bus. Bat. <laughs> Just wait until I tell my cat. She didn't know her cat had fled. Run away the tears she shed. But luckily, Uncle Matt was skilled at mending cats and finding cats, and that's exactly what he did. And all he charged was 50... Quid? 50 pence. Oh, it was, just, oh, it was, it was Lancashire. <laughs> it was Lancashire. Yeah, I was going to say, we're, we're, it was a lot cheaper up here. Um, I... I, <laughs> I, 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 I I feel terrible. I got at least two of them in, in the. I, I don't know whether you purposefully misdirected me there. <laughs> so, it's, it's, it's excellent job, Paul. Well, um, thank you very much. It's, uh, I should maybe try poetry as a day job. Um, it's, <laughs> I, when, I, I did notice actually when we were looking uh, at some of your previous work, and as I, as I mentioned to you when we were uh, sort of setting up the interview, uh, I've been following your work for for a long time, and and comedy and misdirection seem to go together, um, and that alongside you tend to use alliteration quite a lot in your work as well is uh, is are those the things that you hang on to when you're writing a poem when you're looking for an audience to get interactive do you, do you like to write like that i think it's something that folk appreciate um lim- limericks mm. sort of in- the insistent rhyme and the known form of a limerick um so that, that i mean the tricks is you can say they're tricks to some extent, they're, but they're devices, aren't they? That's what they are. They, they're, they're popular devices. <laughs> <laughs> well, this was, I mean, we mentioned earlier on when we were um, uh, sort of talking up the interview earlier on, uh, of course, you, your uh, miserable Malcolm uh, was, was voted, the se- uh, which, which makes it sound like the second most popular comic poem. And you kind of think, oh, did, or, you know, did, did you just miss out on that top spot? And then you look at the top spot and it was Spike Milligan in the top spot. And I'm, yeah. I'm almost certain that almost every poet would go, I'll be second to Spike Milligan, that'll be yeah. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> absolutely, and and, and uh, that I, I, I had a chance to perform uh, the Ning Nang Nong, mm. and um, I d- divided the audience up into th- Ning's Nangs and Nongs. <laughs> oh wow! It was really lovely. It's, it, it's just a beautiful piece. 
It is. I was the first poem I ever learned as a child. Uh, I, I got it. I think I was in like year five or something like that. Uh, and uh, and I had to perform it in assembly. But now I know it so well. I can do it at the lightning speed. And it's kind of like a bit of a party piece for me with kids because they, this it's just your senses get absolutely overwhelmed with that poem. It's wonderful. Yeah. But but turning to Malcolm, I mean, do, uh, I've got Malcolm in front of me. Do you? Uh, have you I, I'm assuming it's something you've got ingrained in your brain as well. <laughs> Yes, I remember that piece. Could, could you could you would you be able to share, share Malcolm with us? Um, yes, a <laughs> miserable Malcolm from Morecambe had Rottweilers but would not walk them. They were stuck in all day, but no muck would they lay because Malcolm had managed to cork them. Indeed, they had been corked, uh, and that's uh, 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 as uh, p- pets coming back again. You see, and and bringing bringing everything back, um, and. And that kind of lifting up of of people sort of brings us on to, but you know, we've obviously had ten months now of of people feeling very very down on things. But there's there's been some lights coming through all the way through this this lockdown. And you you were saying that particular um, radio has been a sort of a bit of an inspiration yeah. for you and, and yeah. a kind of something to hang on to during the the course of the lockdown. Yes, uh, the big yeah, right at the beginning. I was I mean, like many of us, I was very at sea. I mean. Mm trying to find a way to, to to grapple with things. And my daughter said, Isabella said to me, you've got to have a routine, Dad. Um, so I started listening to Composer of the Week on... So I, so Radio 3 is the station that I've listened to. I, start, I, I started listening to Radio 3 because when I was working in the pyjama game, which you mentioned earlier mm. on, I was in a dressing room with two other men and I, th- I just, I thought, well, what's a, r-? and I thought it'd be nice to have the radio on while we're getting ready. And I thought, what's a station that is sort of pretty, s- bit widespread of pe- people are going to like it? And I thought, Radio 3. Yeah. And so that is how I started listening to it. And Composer of the Week's on a mi- midday each day. And it's a little focal point of my day, just listening to, to that, um, breaking my day up. So I sort of work up towards that little zenith, if you like, and then go, uh, go beyond. Uh, go beyond that and and that's been quite an important thing and 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 listening to that station i've come to hear programs that i hadn't heard before that i've recommended to you Hmm. um uh, like the uh, j to z jazz program on a saturday um which is a fantastic program um and uh, many things that i but but it's you you think i am am i going to get people to listen to this i have to i say to friends of mine you've got to listen to this and i thought but what's a door what's a doorway into this thing and i think finding a doorway because some people say no i don't like jazz Mm. but you say well you're going to like this (laughs) (laughs) It's, so, yeah, it's, uh, uh, and it's it's the same. I mean, we were talking about this uh, about obviously because we spend our entire life here at our radio station promoting our radio station, and we, but we've we've taken on a lot of new presenters in this last sort of few months or so, and we're discovering things about each other. We have a rock show on a Monday where uh, we have a, um, a a guy Andy Turner who comes in and does an absolute. He's, he's got an amazing musical knowledge of rock. But at the same time, the following night we have a country show, and I'm—I'll I'll tell you now—I don't listen to very much country. But but yeah. Craig Taylor, who presents our country show, will will absolutely wax lyrical about it for hours. Uh, yeah. And and it's like you say, you you get those sort of ways, those gateways into finding new things. And and you've opened my my ears again to the jazz song that we're going to play in, in a little bit of uh, a while which um <laughs> M- melanie kemp will be listening very uh, carefully she's uh, she has a midweek music show because she has an old, uh, entire hour of uh, of, uh, of uh, interesting covers that we pr- probably wouldn't heard uh, elsewhere yeah. Uh, yeah. and this version of ring of fire is is brilliant um but do you, do you think that actually radio can kind of lift people's just mental health we have, we've, got, we've got to go to this music break yeah, in a second yeah. but how how do you think that, that that kind of ties in with the work that you do as well around well, mental health well certainly the music um, I, I was uh, because i knew that we were going to speak about this i was thinking about it earlier on and i was looking through the um the other program that we we inside music which we i think we're going to talk about later on mm. but, in, but at the end of the pro the whole story program that you listened to that was Tchaikovsky wasn't there it was a Tchaikovsky yeah. piece and I remember when I was I was feeling a bit gloomy um I'd gone to a prom actually and I was feeling gloomy and I and, and um one of the things was the pathetic by Tchaikovsky and it did lift me it really did lift me I just found it took me to a place where I just just let go a moment um and music can do that it can make you let go um and and that 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 Tchaikovsky did uh, very much so for me. 
and and that lifting i think that just coming back to your, your poetry work you've you've worked uh particularly on on projects that that are helping to lift people in terms of their mental health for a while there's uh, a warning may contain nuts i found mental spaghetti was something you were involved with uh, in 2007 there was a, a festival called bonkers fest which you appeared at um there's has that been something that you've wanted to to kind of keep in touch with yes um I, uh, there's a, I just there's, there's this little quote from john keats here mm. um is which he wrote in a letter to his brother george he said i have passed my time in reading writing and fretting the last i intend to give up and stick to the other two and i mean that's john keats mm. <laughs> people think john you speak about poets people having a being serious people think john keats that john keats is a very playful guy mm. and playfulness um, is something that can be very helpful and, and laughter, obviously. Uh, in and and but that's somebody gloomy, being funny. Mm. He's gloomy, but to be the glue and because it helps the perception, the outside perception of somebody who's got depression. If that person is funny about it, it's a different story, isn't it? Yeah, it, it it just brings an entire new layer and helps us to understand things in a, in a completely different way. Um, now that kind of lightness, I think this this track that you've selected for us by I'm going to get the name right. It's Rudresh Mahathrapa. Mahathrapa. Have I got that right? Been, I been, yeah, it's a difficult. It's, it's a, a difficult, difficult one if you've never come across him before. <laughs> it's difficult to say difficult. But it's a blooming good Johnny Cash cover. That's what it is. Um, it, where did, did you say you discovered this on the as part of the Radio 3 programme? It was on, yeah, it was on the J to Z programme. And um, it, the, the, I do recommend, because I think it's still on the, the Listen Again on Radio 3. It was mm. a sort of review of the year. And this was one of the tracks um, that the presenter uh, introduced us to. And it's just such a... I, I, I'd, I'd say this is a way in for... Some people who don't like jazz. Yeah, definitely. This is Ring of Fire. Dedicated to the Rossendale Valley, this is your very own Rossendale Radio. Indeed, this is Russendale Radio, and it's the final part of my interview with John Hegley this afternoon. And uh, we've been listening to Ring of Fire uh, and, and having a chat about uh, some of the times that you've been up in this part of the world uh, previously. We, you'd, uh, our, our very own Joe Petri saw you once in Haslingdon, and we're, we're struggling to work out where. Um, but also, um, one of our listeners, Stephen Taylor, got in contact and said he'd uh, arranged a gig with you at King George's Hall, which you remember fondly, I think. Yeah, yeah, Blackburn. It's- it was in Blackburn, yeah. It was, it was, it was, I'm right in thinking it was some sort of cabaret evening. I think because I think we played the pub, and I think maybe there was a second gig that was 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 there. Because um, I, I I do know that when I played in Blackburn, somebody said that was a good turn, mate, and I said to Nigel, who was performing with me, "I'm not just another turn." And <laughs> Nigel said, "You are, up here, lad." <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just another turn up here. <laughs> We've, I've, I've done some gigs with some, some pretty sort of, you know, da- down in London, they're, they're very kind of A-list people, and then up here is like, you're right, you're next on, lad, go on. <laughs> um and it's uh and also we, when we were asking uh, uh listeners to uh, sort of get in contact with questions um actually our very own uh, dory partington who, pre- who presents uh the, the one of the morning shows here on, on rossendale radio uh she said just just ask him what's the highlight of his career and i said what just one just want to pick out one so uh, that's your task how do you sum up what's the best moment of your career to date go on i just think it's i just think it's the things that um things that are said to you um, I, things that are said by the children. I mean, I mentioned mm. the child, and one of the children said, "Who are you? Who are you talking to?" <laughs> Which uh, it's, it's it, because they. It, it was just an amazing thing that just. just um, yeah, just the thing. I mean, just, people say children are imaginative. They're not always imaginative. I wasn't always imaginative as a child. Sometimes they are. Sometimes they aren't. Um, and also, um, I was asked. I asked the uh, children. Uh, in a children's show at Edinburgh, what's the difference between dogs and deck chairs? And a child said, deck chairs can't fly. Yeah, it's, it's absolutely true. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, it's they, a good answer isn't it's, it? it's a perfect answer and then you, it, it leaves you as stumped as, as as everybody else in the room which is which is i think wonderful um now we um to, right just coming towards uh some of your work uh sort of elsewhere you, you you've done a lot of work uh, working on john keats work in yeah. particular um and when you mentioned this i i it's one of my favorite quotes which i picked out uh, which uh, now you know m- far more about John Keats as a, as a poet and a man than I do. Um, but his quote that, that's always rung really lovely with me, especially at the moment, because it's the things we're all missing, is give me books, French wine, fruit, fine weather, and a little music played out of doors by somebody 
I do not know, which is to me some sort of very summery utopia out there sitting out there on a, on a nice lawn with a gingham basket, a, a gingham blanket and a picnic basket. Um, it's, it's a good scene. And, and, and when you, because you, you told me that in the interval, mm. in the when, and when you told me that, I said to you, I've got something that relates to that. Mm. And it's from the program, um, the Inside Music program that was on uh, this, this on Boxing Day. And uh, he said his name was Pekka Kusisto, and he's um, a violinist from Finland. Mm. And they had, I think it was a Kenyan piece of music that was play, played, sung. And he said, I don't know what it means, but the song is about whatever in my life needs singing about at the time. Oh. Isn't that amazing? It's, yeah, it, it doesn't mean anything, but at the same time, it can mean absolutely everything to you. And that's, that, that's what words can do, isn't it? Is, or, or lyricism can do, or, or art can do, or culture. It can just find a moment for you and be everything can, and nothing at yeah, the same time. It, yeah, it can be the right thing for you um, at that time, yeah. Uh, now, this, Keith's work, you, you, now there was obviously plans to tour, uh, and some of those plans have, have had to be curtailed this year, and this we're all a bit at sea about what's, what's going to happen. But what's the, what's the plan to... Because you're going to work with schools and writers groups, aren't you, um, across yeah. the country. What What is the general plan? Um, well, the, I've, the, the first one that's coming up now is in um, Shap, which is... Um, further north in yourselves mm. and i think further over to the west oh no but you're west so yeah it's on the west it, yeah, but it's I, it's right up it's carlisle way is, i was going to say you're heading up towards cumbria in that direction aren't you um do you know it chap have you come across I've, it? I've been past it on the m6 many times i did a bit of work at papa tully house up in carlisle quite uh, quite a lot and uh, and uh, yeah i was, was always passing chap never actually been to chap um, well but, they've got a school there because right. uh, i was saying how many year you know how many year how many as uh, classes are there in each year and then there's, there's not there's two years in one class you yeah. know? so they, because they're very sm small groups um so which is really nice so, and they were they, they it was it's it's uh, organized by the wordsworth trust mm. which is at dove cottage um and the, were they wanting so that, that's really lovely that there's you know, uh, different ages in the class but they're wanting to move get the children's stuff working with older people's stuff right um and merging all that together and that's that's that really lovely thing that you can do with poetry as well is it can it can really help make that bridge across communities i remember doing some work in a in a, in a care home uh and and talking about a, po a poem of mine and it reminded one of the residents of something that they had recited in assembly like 70 years previously and she got wow. up and she she recited this poem and they asked her about it and they said when was the last time you said that poem she said when i was at school and oh, I, I, and it just it just triggered something in her head i suppose one of the nurses afterwards and she said she doesn't speak she rarely speaks but it oh. that moment just triggered it yeah. and it, it does stay with us uh, and, and and like you say making that connection between older the older yeah, generation it's, and it's older an people. exciting thing i mean i've not done I, I've not done that work, actually. I've not done work with young youngsters and older folk. I mean, I have old, old youngsters and older folks in my shows. Mm. Um, so I, I'm really looking forward to doing that. The only time I've seen uh, in a school was that they had um, in the dining hall in one school I went into, older folk came in and had school dinners with the kids. And I just thought, wow, this is just so, so lovely. And speaking of mixing things up, and you mm. sp speaking of mental health, as you did earlier, when I did a poetry festival in Medellin in Colombia, the, me the, 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 the town people came up to the mental hos hospital and we all sat with the, with the patient, the patients. Yeah. I mean, it's, it was just, and, and we all heard poetry together. It's it's a really lovely communal thing, isn't it? When you do, when you're doing it, I mean, we we have an open mic night here up in Ramsbottom, just down the road, uh, and sometimes just people sharing words in different styles and genres all the yeah. time. Just the, the, that process of everyone sitting together and listening together and really actively listening and sharing is is a really powerful thing, and I'd, I recommend it to everyone when we can get back. 
<laughs> I would recommend going to a spoken word evening. So what have you got? Have you got what's the one you've got there where well, you are? Well, it's, we, it's, this is the the kind of adjoining part of this show. We we call it. This is the waffle hour, and the waffle uh, the waffle hour came from the waffle event that we do in Ramsbottom. So it's a uh, sort of uh, sort of oh, joining. So you have an two. event as well. You yes, have an event. Yes, indeed. If you but can, you not put it online. Uh, well, we we're, we're considering doing such a thing, John. Uh, well, Cowdew so, Poets. If you look up Cowdew Poets, that's mm-hmm. a group that one of the groups I'm hoping to work with further. They're in Carlisle, and they do an online version of their speakeasy they call it oh lovely and it really works really well right well there you go that's a, that's a that's a link up for the future i'm going to be uh, I'll, I'll, there'll be further emails coming to you <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, honestly, I could talk to you all day. Unfortunately, there's two things I've got to do. I've got to fit in a whole bunch of adverts for the advert before yep. the hour finishes, uh, and also I have to play some music. But um, you've you've now you've opened uh, my ears uh, to this uh, because you you recommended a, a playlist to me, and I listened to the whole show, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to choose a piece of classical music from this, and I've gone for a little bit of Strauss from the list that you gave me. Um, yep. What what why? I mean, I've. Uh, if this is a De, De Rosen Cavalier, um, which uh, I don't know very much about opera, I'm going to tell you now. But at the same time, this kind of spoke to me and it's, it sounded exceptionally beautiful. Um, yeah. Wh- uh, why do you think we should, we just need to sort of open our ears a little bit? Well, it's interesting that, that you chose that because I, I thought you were going to listen to the week before. So I, today, ah. <laughs> I like to listen to that whole program myself. Well, there you go. And so <laughs> I've lo- discovered a load of stuff <laughs> and I'd never heard that piece before. And so I heard it today, and I said to Mel, my partner, have you ever heard this? And she's not heard it. I said, you've got to listen to this. There you it's go. Like, it is. It's a really amazingly beautiful piece of opera that I've not heard. And and the thing about that program, Inside Music, mm. sat, Radio 3, Saturday, 1 o'clock, is that they play, the, like the last, the, the chat last week, he had Messiaen, and he also had Joni Mitchell so, amongst his choice. Messiaen, French composer, who does very, very heart-rending pieces. And this piece that you've chosen... I'd not heard, so thank you for introducing me to this, um, is a piece of opera, and it's about somebody who's in love, but, ha- but is, is, she's an older woman, and she's in love with a younger man, and, sh- and the, she knows that it, it's right for her, her to be with this young guy. She just feels it's right in her bones. And so she says, I'm giving him, I have to give him up, even though she's a, I think she's a very high up person in society. But she says, you must go, and you to be, be together and this is her song isn't it it is indeed um it's been absolutely lovely to talk to you john uh, and fingers crossed at some point or another uh, when you're up in this part of the world i'll have you sitting in that chair opposite me and we'll be able to do this in the oh, studio yeah. together um in the meantime however this is de ross and cavalier richard strauss uh, and that's been john Hegley. thank you very much thank you 104.7 rossendale radio and there you have it. We come to the end of another Waffle the Bite Size podcast. My thanks go to John Hegley for spending the time to talk to us about his career and about the way he works and, and about his love of music and about trying out new things. Um, it was an absolute pleasure to talk to him. He's an absolute poetry legend. Uh, and hopefully at some point or another, we'll be able to get him into the studio and uh, go and catch him when he's out and about on tour. My thanks as ever go to everyone involved with making Waffle the Bite Size podcast to our friends at Rossendale Radio for allowing us to broadcast on a Sunday afternoon and of course my thanks to melanie kemp for all her work on editing and production we will see you next week with another great guest